Hi, it's Kernetex here with a video about installing ZFS on Linux, specifically Linux from scratch. Um, I was going to do a video about installing it on various um, different distributions, but there's so many different ways of doing it. Um, I decided just to do it for Linux from scratch, um, as I've done two tutorials on building and installing Linux from scratch. Um, I can say for Debian, for example, um, it's a bit of a convoluted um, method to install it. Um, but for a distribution such as Ubuntu, it's quite easy. You can just do app install ZFS and it should just be added to the, um, to the installation and the ZFS programs should be available immediately. Um, as I say, for any other distribution, I'm afraid you're going to have to use the internet to find out how um, it will be installed. Ubuntu has been officially part of the system, although, it, although it's not um, installed by default, it is part of the standard repositories. Debian isn't. Um, Gen 2 it is now, it's stable, it's been stable for a while. Um, if you install it on Gen 2, it's just Emerge ZFS, you shouldn't need to do any other configuration. Um, so, as I say, it's, it varies among distributions. But like I say, for this video, I'm going to show you how to install it on Linux from scratch. Um, the Linux from scratch I've got on the screen at the moment is as it was um, when it was booted for the first time, apart from the fact that I've gone into the uh, kernel just to set up the bigger fonts to make it easy to read but apart from that it's it's um, absolutely fresh um, as I say as if it was just the first install so much so there's no user no no um, ordinary user all I've got is the root account um, there's no fancy colors on the directory listings or anything like that it is just the basic um, Linux from scratch um, if you'd followed my videos for Linux from scratch for building it, then it would be as it would um, be when you'd finish the book and finish the videos. So the ZFS that's used on Linux now is uh, from a project called, as you can see on this web page, ZFS on Linux, and their main web page is zfsonlinux.org. Um, and as you can see, they've got various versions here available. The previous version 7 and before that there was actually two files you had to download. This is the actual ZFS suite of programs plus um, an SPL uh, libraries that were really. Um, I think there was Sun porting libraries as I remember that stood for and it was basically um, I suppose you could call it an adapter or an interface between um, the Linux system and the ZFS program, so it made the Linux kernel, if you like, and the Linux system appear to be similar to a Sun system. Um, but now that's all been integrated in, into the 0 .8, uh, 0 0.08 versions. The um, uh, Solaris porting layer, sorry, did I say Sun porting layer earlier on? It's Solaris porting layer, um, or libraries. Um, that's all been integrated into um, the single ZFS program now and it's it's quite a lot better than it used to be. It seems to build and install a lot quicker now that they've done that so maybe they've um, got rid of some duplication between the two separate packages. Um, so as you can see at the moment the latest version is 0.8.4 which is from May the 12th this year so it's quite recent. There's lots of good new features that have been introduced with 0 0.8. Um, in my ZFS videos, which I'm going to start producing very soon, I, I won't be going through all the features. I'll be going through some of the key features that I use as a hobbyist. Um, a lot of the features on there you'd probably be interested in more if you're running ZFS um, in a commercial um, setting. But then again, you'd probably have proper training rather than just listening to some some guy on the internet talking about his experiences with it but um, for uh, domestic personal use um, like I said I'll just go through the key features give some demonstrations 
Um, one of the key features that has been introduced is, uh, in 0 0.8 is encryption, which is is quite good. It could be quite useful as um, we all get more security conscious. So yeah, that's the main uh, web page. Um, what you need to do is to download from this link. Now, of course, because we're on Linux from scratch, there's no way of downloading. We've only got FTP as a method of downloading by default. So what it might be best to do is to download these on a computer where you've, you've got you know, web access, put them on a USB stick, plug them into your Linux from scratch machine and just copy them off the USB sticks, probably the easiest way. Um, I've, I've already copied them onto the Linux from scratch in preparation for this video, so I won't be showing you how to do that. Um, the um, There's one library that's needed. Um, that's not in the standard Linux from scratch, which is the uh, lib ti rpc library. So what we'll be doing, we'll be going through the instructions on the Beyond Linux from scratch uh, manual to install that. Um, now again, there's the problem where they've only got an HTTP link. Um, so you can either, again, stick it on a USB stick and you know, move it across onto your Linux from scratch machine, or alternatively, there is also this um, Oregon State University that maintains a mirror of all the uh, Linux from scratch and beyond Linux from scratch libraries, so you could download it from there if you wish to. Um, if you do do that, I would um, be very careful about checking the MD5 sum just to ensure you, you know, it's downloaded okay and that it's not. Um, you know, been hacked or anything like that, just make sure you are getting the, the genuine article. Um, so really, that that's probably the only awkward thing about doing this on a, a bare uh, Linux from scratch um, installation. Obviously, if you follow through some of the PLFS videos that I've already posted for version 9.1, um, it will be a little bit easier in that you'll have wget, um, also the... Um, text browsers and maybe even by the time you've you've come to watch this video I've, I've demonstrated how to install the uh, graphical um, X windows and the, um, the web browser Falcon um, you might even have already already done that yourself um, so yeah basically as I say all you need is this one file here the actual ZFS source and this libtirpc um, tarball, which as I say, you can get from this Oregon State University mirror or or get it directly from this link, put it on a USB stick and move it across. Uh, luckily there are no dependencies apart from this Kerberos dependency. You don't need it for Linux from scratch. Obviously if you do need it for other reasons then you might want to think about reinstalling LibTAR PC at a later date um, if you're putting ZFS on your Linux from scratch machine straight away as I'm going to demonstrate now. So what I shall do first of all is I'm going to log in. As I say, I've only got the root account, so I've got to log in as root. I'm not going to bother creating a normal account because there's only two packages to install for this demonstration, but obviously normally you'd want to have um, a, user, a normal user to do your day-to-day -day work, such as building and compiling, and obviously only use the root when you're installing when you need to use it. So as I say, I've already got the um, two files here. There's the libtirpc table there and the ZFS one there, just going behind the um, browser here. So what I should do, first of all, is extract the libtirpc table, nice and quick. And obviously I can't copy and paste the commands in. So what I'm going to have to do is to type them in very carefully to build and install this. So I'm in the correct directory. Let's type the configure command. And start typing in the options to it. Prefix equals four slash user sysconf dir 
equals form slash etc. Well, I'll just wrap this round onto the next line so you can see what I'm doing. Disable static and disable GSS API. So that disable GSS API, you'd have to omit that if you had installed Kerberos and you did want that functionality, but we haven't got Kerberos, so I'm just going to be leaving, uh, leaving that in there. So let's run the configure command first. In fact, what I should have done before I pressed enter is just double check that um, I have actually put some sensible stuff in there. And yes, it does look fine. So I'll carry on. So let's run make. Let's get the prompt back make. Um, I can't even remember if I've got the make flag set. No, I haven't. So what I'm going to do is just do make minus J4 because I haven't got the parallel make flag set. That's done. So we can install it now. Already as user, so we just type the command in. That's OK. MV minus V. Just highlight this line to keep my eyes on it. MV minus E forward slash user, forward slash lib, forward slash lib, tirpc dot so dot star to forward slash lib. Yeah, that seems to have worked. Then ln minus sfv dot 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 lib lib tirpc dot so dot three dot zero dot zero and I'll put the rest of this on another line so I can still see it. So user lib lib tirpc dot so and that looks like that's worked. So if I look at this sure uh, this um sim link that's been set Yep, that's pointing to a valid file by the looks of it. So I can actually put that in to make sure that it does actually point. Um, have I done that right? No, I need to remove this, don't I? That's it. And of course you can see that the two dot dots are going up to the root and then back down again to the um, lib directory. So if I do that, yes, that's pointed to a file. So that proves that the link has definitely worked. So that should be it for that library. Nice and, um, nice and simple, that library. So go back to the directory where we had the table. I'll clean up. And that's that library done. So now we can move on to um, ZFS from Linux on Linux. Um, there is some good documentation here. The documentation to install it is a little bit sparse, a little bit tucked out of the way. So what I've done is I've just made some notes myself and I'll just go through them. So I don't know if you might want to note them down yourself or just follow along. Uh, but first of all, we can just extract the ZFS table and change into the directory. Now, the first thing we need to do is to do sh autogen.sh. I'll we'll just wait for this to run through. And now we can run the configure command. And the only option I set into this one is to set the prefix 
as forward slash user. So dot configure space minus minus prefix equals forward slash user. So this bit's important here, it's actually looking for the um, kernel source files so, um, or interfaces into the kernel, so if that fails then it means there's something wrong. It could be, I'm not sure if it is the source files, it may be, um, or it may be just be looking at things like proc and sys directories, so if you do have problems, that's the sort of things that you may want to look at, but if, you, if like me you're installing from fresh install of ZFS, there should be no problems at all. So let's build the package and build it in parallel. I'll just wait a minute or two for this to finish. Okay, so that's built. Um, now there are some tests that can be run. Unfortunately, um, there's two requirements we haven't got at the moment. One is that it needs the corn shell KSH. So unless you've got that installed on your system or you plan on using it and installing it, that's a big stopper. Uh, the other problem is that it needs sudo. The scripts use sudo to obviously become roots during the scripts. Um, if you do fulfill those requirements, you want to run them. The um, tests are run by running a script in the scripts directory called zfs test.sh. And you see if I run this now, oh, it actually tells me that it must not be run as root. So, um, as I say, when you do run it as, as the user, it, it does need sudo as well as um, needing to be running a, a corn shell. So I can't test it, so all I can do is do make install. And that's done. Next thing I want to do is to do LD config to load the library cache again and then run dep mod this is to get the dependencies for the modules that have just been created and in theory if we run mod probe zfs now it should install the modules required for zfs that looked like that worked because it paused for a while so if we do ls mod you can see now we've got several ZFS modules that have just been built and we've just inserted into the memory so that they're, they're running um, so what it means now is that we can run the ZFS commands the main one is ZFS that be you'd be using most of the time and you can see that's run there with a 
um, page of commands and the other main one that is not used as often is zpool and there's several other commands there's one called zdb which i think is the debugger is it okay so it can't find a file because we've got no pools active at the moment but you can see it's actually run um, as i say there's several programs um, only really interested in zpool and zfs for day-to-day -day administration of um, zfs file system others for debugging and um, interrogating the, the um, ZFS database. So that is it really to um, uh, to install it. So there's just one other thing I need to show you. Um, if I just go back and clear this up, if I reboot, um, what the problem is now that um, when it reboots, it obviously it won't pick up the modules. It, it can't pick them up automatically. Um, there is a criteria for how modules are automatically installed and unfortunately ZFS doesn't meet these criteria for various reasons. So what we'll need to do is to um, modify the um, a config file, a system config file to um, tell the system to load the modules when it boots. So if I do ls mod, you'll see at the moment there's no ZFS modules there. And if I run ZFS, okay, it's actually run actually, but um, I guess if we try to do anything, it wouldn't work. Let's try that. Yeah, see if I've, I've tried to do a command with the ZPool and it's, it's actually saying it can't find the module and it's telling us to do mod probe ZFS. So I can do that, but obviously you won't want to keep on doing that every time you boot the machine. So if I do that Z pull list command, you can see it's now run. It says there's no pools available. So what we can do is we can edit the sysconfig modules file. And this is one where we tell the system which modules we want to load at boot time. So I'll just put some spaces in there and all you need to do is put in the name of the main module which as you've seen is ZFS and that's it. So if I now reboot again we should see the modules being loaded. Well we might not see them being loaded but they definitely will, will load when we get the um, login up. So there it's saying loading modules, there's a little bit, little pause and it does actually say there it's found the ZFS module. So when we go in now, if we do LS mod, there's all the modules, set pool list and you can see it hasn't come back with an error this time, it's just saying it couldn't find any pools, which is fine. So that, that is it, how to install ZFS on Linux from scratch. I um, hope you found it interesting and useful and I hope you um, follow my ZFS videos which I'll be, as I say, be posting, starting to post up very soon. Um, I hope you find the ZFS system very useful. It's a very clever file system. So thanks for watching. I appreciate a thumbs up and follow my channel by clicking the red subscribe button if you want to hear about other videos like this. Thanks very much. Goodbye.